everybody, it's Jim from Sprague Wood Turning. This week we're going to combine some resin globes along with some beautiful maple burl to make a very unique 80,000 subscriber giveaway bowl. For the 80,000 subscriber giveaway bowl, I thought that I would try something that we haven't done before. And my plan is to use this maple burl. And along with that, we're going to use this ice making mold that, of course, produces round little globes. And what I want to do is fill them up with some pearl red and some sky blue. And mix them together, not separately, mix them kind of together using some art cast. And then once we've got them all cast and this cleaned up and ready for casting, we'll just combine some mother of pearl with some deep cast. And I think that it should give us a really cool look. But I don't know, we haven't been down this road before. So um, first things first, let's get some resin mixed up. For the globes, we're going to be using Designer Epoxy's Artcast Epoxy. It's a good choice for this. That way we can move on with the project tomorrow. And um, again, one of the reasons why I really like this is it really gives you really super clear results. And I like the fact that you get really good color separation from it as well. So that's why I went with this. And I know that I said earlier in the video that I was going to use deep cast, but I'm not. I'm actually going to use art cast throughout this whole project. So that's the pearl red. That's what I decided to go with. And then you'll also see me throw in some sky blue, which is another beautiful blue that designer epoxy has. They've actually come out with two more um, blue colors and two more green. So we'll be seeing them in the future as well. So what I'm going to do now is move these into my clean room and there's some heat in there. And then once these hit 45 degrees ish, we will do the pour into the resin tray, not ice cube tray, resin tray. All right. So we are at almost 50 or sorry, 45 degrees. So we got to get on with this here. What I've done is I've taped these edges uh, shut so that there's no way it can separate. And I also drilled out these little holes a little larger. Uh, the original one is kind of too small for my liking, so it's just slightly a little larger. And the plan here is to just inject the colors. I'm going to kind of mix them all up and just on top of each other. And I might take a stick too, but anyway, we'll see. I, I just, I don't want them to be all kind of one color. I, I want it to all kind of blend together, but stay separate, if you know what I mean. It was a little hard to see, but there actually is, the holes are actually larger in the trays than the other one is. Uh, the other one, I wasn't able to, to fit the end of the syringe into the hole at all. So, you know, I'm just going to throw this in here kind of willy-nilly and, and, you know, basically see what we get. I, I do find that Doing, the, doing these things randomly is probably better than trying to do them all the same evenly because it just it just never seems to work out. So that's that's the whole idea of me doing it this way. I do believe that these resin trays or these ice trays, the way you're supposed to use them is just fill that top part up with water and then eventually it would filter down into the uh, the little holes. But of course, you know, you wouldn't want to do that with epoxy because, you know, you're just wasting a ton of epoxy. Now, I don't want to spoil it, but these trays do work. Uh, the only issue that I really found with it is the majority of those little globes have a little divot in the very top of them where the opening is. And I think the solution of that is to just put that into a vacuum chamber, degas the resin, and then that way there's not so much air in the in the resin when it goes into these little molds and it should be fine there that one's full i'm going to go get my other large one and fill that up too just for future projects if you recall these are the silicone molds that i use for the spaceship hollow form which i still have by the way if you're still interested in getting something like that i still have that and um <laughs> the resin just started to set up too quickly and I, I wasn't able to really fill um, them to the 
to the capacity that I want it to. But, you know, in the end, it's still going to give me something that I can work with in the future and not waste the resin. All right, that's it. This is stuff's all starting to cure up, so I can't uh, work with it anymore. I'll put these in the pressure pot, and we'll see you tomorrow. So it's the next day, and uh, it looks like our levels have dropped off inside here. I don't know if it leaked internally or what the deal is. So uh, anyway, let's tear this apart and see what we've got. You'll see here in a second that there wasn't a lot of flashing on the inside of this mold. So that tells me that it was the air that was trapped inside of the resin. So that's why it's important to degas it before doing this method. That's pretty colors. I was a little worried that it wasn't going to come apart, <laughs> but it did, so that's good. Uh, yeah, it looks like we'll have to like flatten these and then uh, maybe use the UV resin and hold them in place and then we'll be able to pour the clear. So, you know, it's, it's, I'm happy with it. I'm pleased with it. I'm not easiest to get out, I'll tell you that. I'm a little surprised. I thought there was going to be a lot more flashing than what you see here. So that's that's good. Um, yeah, I guess it worked. Well, let's get these out and then uh, we'll get our bowl on the lathe and get it cleaned up and get it ready for casting. It's very Christmassy looking, isn't it? Let's pull these apart. I know that I didn't get enough in here just to get a look at these, see what they look like. Cool texture on those too. Well, I'm sure we can find a use for these somewhere down the road. In regards to the larger silicone molds, I would stay away from them personally. I prefer I do prefer those the, the rigid molds that the smaller globes are made in, and I hate that the silicone mold is as is as flexible as it is because that really kind of you could see there was a ton of flashing between the globes in that one, and there wasn't any in the larger ones. On a different subject, last week I put up the wine glass video, and uh, hopefully you've seen it or you're notified. I noticed that the views were down on it and it you know i thought that it was going to be a, a a good producing video and so far it hasn't been and i'm wondering if youtube has restricted that content because i had wine in the title and it's definitely a thing when i upload videos i have to check off you know does it contain children does it contain drinking guns all this other stuff and um, i'm assuming that if you've got wine in the heading in one of these uh, videos that YouTube may restrict it, even though there's no drinking in it. So I'm just curious to see if people actually got notified. And if they didn't, uh, please let me know. Even though you have your subscription on some, or your bell notification, sometimes they just don't notify you based on, you know, what your settings are in YouTube. Getting back to the video, all I did was simply trim away all of that anchor seal, made sure that things were running true. Use the wire brush to try and clean up the very top of this along with that sandpaper. And now I'm just cleaning off the rest of the anchor seal, getting it ready for casting. Since our little balls are shiny and smooth, I figured that we would throw them into this tumbler. And I bought this to do the uh, aluminum nuggets, if you remember, to give that, to give the aluminum nuggets an etch or a tooth. So we'll do the same to these. Uh, I have no idea how long it's going to take. I'll throw it on for five minutes. Um, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. All right, that's been about 10 minutes. Let's see what we're looking at here. I've only got four left, and I don't want that one's almost all blue. And of course, that one's all red. And this one's got a big divot in it. And, uh, Flashing is really hard to cut away from this, so if I don't need it, I'm not going to use them right at this moment, that's for sure. Yep, that definitely worked. i got to go in and take all this uh, 
I believe it's actually aluminum. Got to wash the aluminum off them, but other than that, they're nice and roughed up, so that's exactly what we're looking for. We'll get the other ones loaded in, and uh, once they're all cleaned up, we'll bring it back. All right, since we've got some pretty decent voids here, I want to cover this with some plastic so that uh, when I wrap this in the kitchen waste bags, it doesn't encroach into this area here. So I'm trying not to repeat previous errors. So <laughs> in the past, I've thought that things were going to be okay, even though the plastic was pulled tight. So I'm just making sure that that plastic can't go into that area to ruin the, uh, the casting. There, there's going to be another plastic piece on the outside of this. So I just need to make sure that that plastic isn't going to, or the kitchen waste bag isn't going to go inside of this. I think I'll glue there too. Here I'm using the hot melt glue to cover all of those sharp pieces of plastic because when the pressure goes in there, that could puncture the kitchen bag that's going to be containing the resin on the outside, and we certainly don't want that. This is the bucket we're going to use. It's just a cut down. I'm not even sure how big this one is. Two U.S. gallon. That is. And uh, I'm going to throw a bed of rice in. So if you haven't been here before, what I'm using is just normal kitchen bags and the bed of rice will push up on the bottom of the casting, preventing resin from pooling down there. That's the whole idea of this. It actually works quite well when it's done correctly. Give that a haircut. Along with the kitchen bag that's on the outside of this piece, there's also bucket material that's around it, and that will keep the kitchen bag from encroaching into the area where we're going to pour the resin. For the inside, I double bag it. Um, probably don't really need to, but I, I don't know. I'm just looking for that reassurance. And again, make another collar that goes around that bag of rice and that way that bag won't encroach into the area where the resin is going to be poured as well. Again, when it's done correctly, it works perfectly. If you skip any of these details, you're going to have issues. Here's our globes or balls, whatever you want to call them, cleaned up. I know they still look a little shiny, but when you rub your fingers on them, there's a bit of a tooth. So I think it'll work just fine. Now I'm just going to figure out how I want to put these in here. I think that uh, the holes, I don't know if it matters. I'll just put all the holes up there on the very top. One of the things that I would do differently is I would orientate that opening so that it's either facing outwards or inwards. And the reason for that is when it gets mounted back on the lathe, you probably would have been able to trim the majority of that away and it wouldn't have been an issue. If you had to flipped it upside down, and so the hole was open. You could have trapped air in there and then caused a big bubble in the project, which we don't want. I know that's very tough for you guys to see, but I think it's going to be pretty cool if it works. I'm a little concerned about these globes moving around. So I think what I'm going to do, I don't know, that low area down there, do I put two in there or do I leave it? so that it just flows around the rim. Hmm. I do wish that, you know that, this is a common problem when you're working with things that are all the same size, trying to fit it into a container like this. You know, it rarely is it gonna work for you, where it's all gonna be, you know, filled in nicely. So this is the new UV light from Designer Epoxy. Uh, it's got a normal plug, and there is a on and off switch right here. So I figure what I'm going to do is take some of this UV resin and just try and put a dot, a drop between each one of these to keep them kind of in place. And then I'll throw the UV light on top, and hopefully that will cure that all up, and it'll stop this from moving around and driving me insane. That's the plan anyway all subject to change. So here's the new UV resin. A 
all that should take is a minute and then it will be done. There is a little stand here that flips out. So um, I want to try do some finishing, uh, some pop coat finishes with this UV resin. Anyway, that's the plan. And uh, now that I have this light, we might be able to try that. I'm not going to do it on this piece because I'm just, I've got to figure some stuff out before I do that. But uh, this is 50, uh, 50 watts, I think they said. So, and it's a true UV light and not a black light. There you go, good and solid. So yeah, there you go. It's got a little stand if you wish. You could also probably bolt that to something if you wanted to say do finishes, which is kind of what I really want to try with this. Um, but anyway, you can get these at designerepoxy.ca. Dwayne's a little too large for this, so I'm going to use this. Put this in my large pressure pot. All right, let's mix up some resin. Like I said in the beginning, that I was originally thinking about using deep cast here, but I decided to go back to the art cast. Uh, this is around an inch thick, so it should have been fine, and it actually was. It worked quite perfectly, so I'm quite happy about that. There's the mother of pearl. Again, maybe if I was to do this again, I probably wouldn't have mixed it so strong. Uh, of all the pigments, I do find that mother of pearl seems to be one of the hardest to mix in properly. Uh, let me know if that's your experience as well. All right, so it's a little tough to do here, but I mean, that's about as good as I can make it for you. And I want this to come all the way up, even into the uh, plastic area here. That's why I've picked, mixed up so much. Some will probably question why I didn't use the vacuum chamber, and the simple answer to that is this is a solid burl, and I just didn't see the need for it. All right, that's it. I'm just going to throw this in the pressure pot and we'll see you tomorrow. Very carefully. Good morning. So it is the next day and so far I don't see any thermal cracking. Let's hope that that's the same all the way through this. Let's get this out and see what we're looking at. Everything looks like it's filled in nicely. One thing that I was really hoping for was that the white was going to be above all of these. Like I want a white top with this. So definitely got some resin wastage there. I guess maybe that should have been put in about there and then the rice would have been able to cover that up. But you know, I'm pretty happy with it. Don't see any thermal cracking. I think should be good to go. Right, I'm just going to leave that on there for now. Uh, yeah, I'll try and get it off when I get it on the lathe. So I'm just going to grind this off and we'll get a uh, glue block on the bottom of this and get it on the lathe. Here I'm just using the cuts all sander to grind back the excess resin that's on the very bottom of this bowl where we're going to stick our waste block. And you'll see me fitting the block and, you know, it's rocking back and forth. And once it stops rocking back and forth, then you know that it's good to be glued. If you don't get it to the stage where it's nice and solid on the bottom, like it is right here, then you can get some vibration when it goes onto the lathe. So try to get contact all the way around the waste block with no gaps. I'll dip that into a hot, the hot melt glue that's in the electric frying pan and stick it on the bottom. Works great, give it a try. So I think a lot of people missed this last week. Uh, this is the number three or the 5 8 Hercules. And this is the main uh, Hercules that I use. Mike Hunter sent me this one as well. Now this is the number three, or sorry, the number 
number one and it's got a 3 8 shaft and I like getting tools that that already have the handles on them so you can get them with the handles or without and for size comparison I mean there you go so I, I get asked this quite a bit actually which one do I like to use and of course I want to use the bigger robust one uh, it has a longer handle as you can see right here and you know for me it's been my go-to tool for working with resin uh, it's nice to have the smaller one too to get into tight little areas uh, if you're making small little boxes it'd be good for that as well amongst other things so anyway that is what the size difference is so you know uh, when it comes to wood turning tools and bowl turning I do find that bigger is better So for this piece, it was turned at 750 RPM throughout the whole video here. I like to leave those real-time clips in to give people a sense of how violent it is when you first mount these pieces onto the lathe and how it's, the tool is bouncing around. So, you know, a lot of I think a lot of times when new turners step to the lathe and they encounter this, that they think they're doing something wrong when in, in fact it really isn't. It's just that, you know, things aren't trued up yet. And once they're trued up, then it's a lot easier to, uh, you know, to maintain bevel contact and, and not have the tool bouncing around like you see it here. You know, contacting the surface and the tool being kicked out, uh, it, it can be quite violent. But as I mean, as you watch these clips, you'll see that it gets smoother and smoother and smoother as you work the surface down to the point that you can ride the bevel the whole time. And then, you know, everything is in your favor then. As you've been watching this video on the outside of this bowl, I've actually probably done every cut that I usually do with the Hercules. There's a 45 degree cut. I did a push cut uh, just before that. Handle up, that way the cutter is below center. So if you're really worried about getting a catch, that's one of the easiest ways to use this tool until you get comfortable using it. But you know, it, you can really just truly treat it like a gouge. Uh, there may be a few cuts you won't be able to do with it like a gouge would, but for the most part, I treat this like a gouge and it came naturally to me when I first got it. So the goal here is to actually try and get rid of a lot of this excess resin so I can get that uh, the yellow plastic piece out of there, which is old bucket material. And, you know, I prefer to try and save these pieces because I'll reuse them down the road and not have to cut up another bucket to do so. Uh, but anyway, that resin kind of had a real good grip on it, so it was tough to get rid of. Eventually I'll get it out and uh, that way I'll be able to use it in the future here. Now that, that bucket material is finally gone, we can actually get down to turning, finish turning this piece. 
it is a, I, I do leave the walls on this quite thick. I think they're over a half inch actually. And really what I was trying to do was to center them globe so that, you know, you didn't have a small one on the outside and, and large on the inside if, if you follow. I want to have them kind of uniform in size. It doesn't work out that way, but you know, you'll see here in the future that, you know, there's there's a lot more resin on the top of this than there is in the thumbnail, if you're observant. And um, we'll figure out why that's no longer there in the thumbnail here in a, in a few minutes. In the meantime, I'm just gonna let you enjoy this and uh, I'll come in here in a few minutes. Finally on to sanding, these are the three and a half inch dipple discs from sandpaper.ca and I'll remind you that there is a link in the description to get 10% off your next order and that, does, and that doesn't just apply to these dipple discs, they have a whole line of sandpapers that you can choose from and you will get a 10% discount and they also ship to the US. A lot of people, I'm getting a few calls or a few emails wondering about the shipping to the US and yes they do in fact ship to the US. This is the Triple E buffing compound from the Be All Buffing System. And I use this, if you're new here, I use this just to take any fine little scratches out of that resin if there's any left over from the 800 grit. And then clean it up with some denatured alcohol just before the first coat of finish. All right, here comes the best part. We're going to be using Waterlux Original VOC Medium Sheen. Well, what do you think? I don't know how that one ball moved to throw that off, <laughs> but it did. Uh, the other thing that's kind of interesting is at the top where there was voids, they look like little Pac-Man almost. Weird. Um, Barilla Spectacular. It will certainly take three coats. I don't know how that moved. I thought I had everything all locked in place, but guess not. I do really like how 
to this light a little bit more. I do really like how the mother of pearl wraps around the little globes. Like it's really, really strong there. Uh, yeah, I didn't get as much away on this side as I did on the other. Maybe it just didn't get it perfectly centered. There is one little spot right there where there's a little, I don't know, piece of dirt floating in there or something. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. Anyway, you know, it's it's something new we haven't seen before, so that's usually a good thing. But, you know, I really hate that that moved. And the globes, if you're curious, are a lot more, you can see through them a lot more than uh, the mother of pearl, that's for sure. Lots of chatoyants as well. And that's a pretty cool feature there, too. That'll go right into the bottom of the bowl. All right, well, we'll see you tomorrow the second coat. All right, it is the next day. So, um, while editing this last night, I start to really dislike this piece. <laughs> uh, the white is really overpowering everything. I absolutely despise this, where that one globe is stuck up in the air. But, you know, the white is just really overpowering everything. The other thing too is, I'm not, I don't know, I'm on the fence about these little Pac-Man mouths that, that are there. Uh, so I think the solution to that is to cut this back to, you know, about here. And we'll, we'll chop off some of the top of the globe, some of them through the center, some of them just through the top. But you know, it, it's just not doing it for me. It really isn't. I'm going to stay away from the wood because we should be able to just put one coat of finish on the resin after I get that done. Uh, but anyway, that's that's what I'm... It's really been bothering me when I sat there and edited it last night. I was like, man, I just do not do not like this. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, let me know in the comments what you would have done. Would you have left it? Or would you have done what I'm going to do to it? and Give it a haircut. So I really hate it to have to do this to this bowl, but you know, in the end, I'm, I'm happy with that decision, but it was, it was really just playing with my mind. I just couldn't get over that one ball sticking up in the air and the fact that it left a void behind, which is nothing that we can do about that. But, you know, I think it's for the best. Might be able to incorporate this into something in a future project. <laughs> I didn't want to grab a hold of this because this is <clears throat> quite sharp here. So if you grab hold of it when it's spinning, it could slice you open. So that's why I'd, I probably could have turned the lathe speed down. But anyway, <sighs> yeah. The other thing too was that little black dot that's in there. I absolutely hated that as well. So that was another reason why this had to go. But we did lose an inch off the overall height of this bowl. The only thing that would really explain why that globe moved upwards is because when I was putting that UV resin in, I must have just simply missed it. That's all there is to it. And then uh, it didn't get glued in place and then it moved. So, so we're basically, we're hitting the reset button, but not really. Just had to stay on the very top of this, finish it out again, and then uh, all's good. All right, back again with the Waterlux Original VOC Medium Sheen. And this should do it. I don't think we'll need another one after this. Well, what do you think now? The white certainly doesn't overpower it as much, that's for sure. 
visually from the top, it's probably better looking, more interest anyway. Uh, the resin is, or sorry, the, uh, the burl is spectacular for sure. Lots of nice green in this one. So that way, it'll be interesting to see in the comments what people think. See you tomorrow when we're cutting off the foot. Or when we're doing the foot. Just parting it off the waste block here with the 3 16 inch parting tool from Crown. And just finishing up with a little saw. I thought I would leave this in just to show you how I prepare the next block for the next time it's being used. Some grooves in it for retention. Here I've got the bowl mounted on the vacuum chuck, the largest one that I bought. And trust me, when that is on there, with that large chuck, it is not coming off. That is some pretty strong stuff. I was only able to pull 25 inches of vacuum on this, but boy, it is on there. So I'm glad that I got that larger chuck. That'll help keep things in place. So as I finish this piece up, I want to thank you all for watching. And so let's see what the random YouTube comment picker has selected for names so we can get a winner for this beautiful bowl. Since the last giveaway at 75,000 subscribers, there have been 11 videos, including the 75,000 subscriber giveaway bowl. I have excluded the tractor video, so that leaves us 10 videos to select names from. And these are the names that the random YouTube comment picker has selected for each one of those videos. Let's pick a name. There are the 10 names. Throw them in here. Throw the lid on that little dish. Give it a little shake here. And the winner of the 80,000 subscriber giveaway bowl Susan Burroughs, you are the winner of the 80,000 subscriber giveaway bowl. Congratulations. Send your, de send your, send your details to spragwoodturning at gmail.com and I will get your bowl mailed out to you. Congratulations, Susan Burroughs. All right, let's talk about this week's video. All right, so let's talk about the bowl here. Uh, you know, I think cutting this back was the right decision, even though you're taking an inch off the top of this. It'd be, it's going to be really interesting in the comments to see what people think about that. Um, one of the reasons why I didn't mix the mother of pearl so, so it was more translucent is because if you remember the top of the surface of this pearl, it wasn't exactly the best. So I had visions of these globes being in there and then having a fairly clear resin and looking down and seeing all kind of that ugliness on the very top side of this burl. So that's why I really picked, uh, mixed the mother of pearl strong in this piece, if you're curious. Uh, one thing that I really do like about this bowl is how the resin goes all the way down into the bottom and then up to the rim. It kind of ties it all in. Uh, the globes being more translucent then the mother of pearl I think is going to be an interesting effect too so I'll light this from above for the the, the rotating footage like I usually do and should be interesting to see the the colors coming through the globes uh, the burl itself is really really nice too uh, I just really hate that we lost an inch off the top of this but I, I really think that it was the right decision here is the very bottom there's only one coat of finish on this as it is right now, so it'll need, need at least, I think, one more should do it. And then it'll be ready to go to its new home, and that's Susan. So congratulations again. I believe this piece was 8 inches across and 3 inches tall, somewhere around there. Uh, and, you know, it's a beautiful piece of wood. It's very got lots of interest, something you'll look at for a very long time. And uh, overall, I'm happy with it. I, I am... I, there's some things that I'll change up next time, 
Uh, but, you know, I think it's very, very cool. And it'd be interesting to know what you think in the comments about it. And again, don't forget that that's where we're going to get the winner of the 85,000 subscriber giveaway bowl from the comments. So please leave a comment down below. And I believe Designer Epoxy is still going to be doing the, the three gallon kit at 90,000. So Designer Epoxy and of course in, in the comments all by itself. And that is for Canada and the lower 48 US states only. So the rest of the world we can't accommodate you at this time. All right, so that's it. I don't know exactly what we're going to do next week. I got a couple irons in the fire, if you will. So we'll see um, what comes of that. One could be really cool, so we'll have to see. So you'll have to see by coming back. All right, well, that's it. Getting a major snowstorm. It just never seems to end. Uh, I bet you before this is done, we're going to have a foot of snow here. But anyway, I guess that's uh, what happens when you're a Canadian and living in the northern U.S. too. They deal with a lot of it too. All right, anyway, that's it. Till next week, take care, stay safe, don't forget the bell. Please share my videos with your friends on your social media platforms. That is the largest way for me to build my subscription base here on YouTube. I really would appreciate it if you would do that. See you next week.